I'm sitting down right now, though. Welcome, everyone, to the Everything Show, episode 555. I am your host, Matrix Lawyer 212. And I'm with Steampunk Star Raisin. Of AmberStreet.com here in Hollywood. What's up, Ray? We're not going to have any more interruptions today. What's up, Daniel? Hello. What's up, Scott? I got deep time to get into. All right. So, Brian uh, Fuller was hired as the showrunner of the new Star Trek series. Brian Fuller, who launched his career running Star Trek East, based on in Star Trek Voyager, will return to television franchise as co-creator and executive producer of the new Star Trek series on CBS. So it is going to be on CBS. Yeah, and then it's I guess. Like the first two of, uh, are going to be on the channel, and then they're going to move it to their, All right. their ABC. Their as previously yeah. announced, the new series produced by CBS Television Studios will launch with a special preview broadcast on the CBS television network in early 2017. Mm -hmm. The premiere episode and all subsequent first run episodes will then be available exclusively in the United States on CBS All Access, the network's digital subscription video on demand and live streaming service. The new Star Trek series makes the first original series developed for CBS All Access. The next chapter of the Star Trek uh, franchise will also be distributed concurrently for television and multi-platforms around the world by CBS Studios International. My very first experience of Star Trek is my oldest brother turning off the lights in the house and flying his model of a D7 class Klingon battle cruiser through the darkened halls. Before seeing a frame of the television series, the Star Trek universe lit my imagination on fire, said executive producer Brian Fuller. It is without exaggeration a dream come true to be crafting a brand new uh, iteration of Star Trek with fellow franchise alumni uh, uh, Alex Kurtzman and boldly going where no Star Trek series has gone before. Bringing Star Trek back to television means returning to its roots, and for years those roots flourished under Brian's devoted care, said executive producer Alex Kurtzman. His encyclopedic knowledge of Trek canon is surpassed only by his love for Gene Roddenberry's optimistic future, a vision that continues to guide us as we explore strange new worlds. For the past 50 years, Star Trek has been a groundbreaking franchise that not only changed the landscape of television, but made a significant impact on pop culture, said David Stapp, president of CBS Television Studios. When we began discussions about the series returning to television, we immediately knew that Brian Fuller would be the ideal person to work alongside Alex Kurtzman uh, to create a fresh and authentic take on this classic Atomic series. Brian is not only an extreme gifted writer, but a genuine fan of Star Trek. Having someone at the helm with his gravitas, uh, who also understands and appreciates the significance of the franchise and worldwide fan base, was essential to us. Recently, Fuller served as executive producer and writer on NBC's Hannibal. Based on the characters from the book Red Dragon by Thomas Harris, he got his start writing Star Trek Deep Space Nine, followed by Star Trek Voyager, where he worked his way from freelance writer to staff writer to co-producer. Fuller went on to create the critically acclaimed series Dead Like Me and Wonder Falls. Also, he served as writer and co-producer on the first season of Heroes, which was that was a, that was a great that season. Was good. I love the best season. Before leaving to create the Emmy Award-winning Pushing Daisies, which was also awesome. Fuller is c currently executive producing along with partner Michael Green an adaptation of Neil Gaiman's novel American Gods for the Stars Network. Ooh. This year marks the 50th anniversary of Star Trek, one of the most successful entertainment franchises of all time. The original Star Trek book created by Gene Roddenberry spawned a dozen feature films and five successful television series. Half of a century later, Star Trek television series are licensed on a variety of different platforms in more than 190 countries, and the franchise still generates more than 1 billion social media impressions every month. Star Trek will be produced by CBS Television Studios in association with Kurtzman's Secret Hideout. Kurtzman, Fuller, and Heather uh, Cadden will serve as executive producers. So, and Assignment Earth was going to be the first spinoff, but because it was near the end of its uh, run, they thought, eh. So you can imagine what that could have been like. 
So, Daniel, you're not happy about this? Uh, well, I don't know. I just whatever. I think it's fantastic, dude. I think I think it's fantastic, and a key element he said he said he liked Gene Roddenberry's op optimistic yeah. vision of the future, and so and everybody's been pushing, including that girl from CNET, Bridget Carey from CNET, was saying, "Come on, if you're going to bring Star Trek back, make it more like Next Generation." And I agree, make it more like Next Generation. Absolutely. And IG, IGN, IGN did a video like like a year and a half ago rating the top ten um, best uh, sci-fi series, and they rated Next Generation as number one. And so, and the fact that they're bringing in a guy who wrote episodes from Star Trek Voyager and wrote episodes of Deep Space Nine, hmm. and he's familiar with the original canon, he he worked on it with Rick Berman. So um, that gives me great optimism, and and his, you know, the fact that he seems to appreciate Gene Roddenberry's optimistic vision of the future. If if you get somebody that doesn't appreciate Gene Roddenberry, then he shouldn't be doing Star Trek. And they, well, it has to be the cartoons considered canon. So if you well, don't get somebody that doesn't like, I heard the cartoon was not considered canon. Well, they decided about a some time ago it was going to be. Oh okay. I'm very happy, man, that this guy respects Gene Roddenberry. And, well, the, and I don't think it's going to be like Next Generation. I think it's going to be action. But I think it's also going to be Next Generation. I, mean, I love <laughs> Next Generation. Next generation. Yeah, we, need, we need an update. And this going back like we did with Enterprise, just it did work. <clears throat> Listen, it's going to be canon with the Prime Universe because this guy is a strickler for canon. So... He's not going to destroy the universe that never existed. It's going to be connected mm. to Star Trek Next Generation, Deep Space Nine, and Voyager. And that's the way it's going to be, hopefully. So, I'm happy with it. Daniel, you'll like it. I'm telling you. Yeah. You'll it's, like great to, it's great to have someone who they know who can do the series properly. Then have someone who doesn't know anything about it. Yeah. Right. I, I, you got to have someone that worked on it already, and he worked on two of them already, so I feel safe with no, him doing this. This could be the first good Star Trek in ten years. It could be. I know. I, know, I was going to say. I know it's going to be off topic a little, but look at Chibnall with Doctor Who. Moffat brought him in because he knows about Doctor Who. Well, I mean, Chibnall knows Doctor Who. He's a fan. That's what I said. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's so, what I said, so I'm using that as a comparison. So, yeah. yeah, today brought someone in who knows it already, then start afresh with someone who doesn't know, and then they've got to tell him everything. And they hip and skip around so much. Yeah. All right, so I want to, uh, before we get into what Steampunk wants to talk about, I just want to give the Star Wars box office numbers. Uh, and basically, uh, we have in, as of yesterday... I'm sorry, not as of yesterday, as of Monday, we have in domestically 906,723,418 and worldwide 2,011,123,418. Now, a daily gross is as follows. It's, it's going down, guys. It's 678,000 it made on Monday. So it's not making as much during the week. Yeah, this is going to be just about the release date for uh, DVDs. So. Yeah, and Deadpool's coming out. So once Deadpool comes out, it's over. Oh, I feel. I saw a thing about that uh, today, and uh, Ryan Reynolds said there's going to be a lot of like <clears throat> extra things that they weren't probably extra things when it comes to the DVD because there's so much stuff they got so raunchy with that right. making they couldn't even add it in the film. Also, uh, they just re greenlit Deadpool 2. Yes. And he signed already, and they're going to be filming. They're going to be doing script right away. He's probably going to film at the end of either 2016, possibly, or filming in 2017. I know they want to rush it out for 2017. Mm. I'm pretty sure. I, I just want to make an interesting observation. Last weekend, Star Wars The Force Awakens did better than the opening weekend of Pride, Prejudice, and Zombies. Yes. Yes. In three days, dude. In three, actually, dude, we could even go even more than that. 
It, and Pride, Prejudice, and Zombies, the way I... I was surprised that it did so bad. I guess it must have been really, really campy. All Actually, the way, in one day, January. dude, in one day, on February 6th, it did more than Pride and Prejudice Zombies. In one day. Being mm -hmm. out over two months, almost. Actually, mm -hmm. a month, yeah. It, it, on, on Saturday, the, on Saturday the 6th. It did three million seven hundred sixty-nine thousand, and then, let me give you the box office numbers for Pride and Prejudice. I was waiting for Matthew to get me by. I was waiting for Matthew to get black armbands. Now yeah. we just want to warn you. Yeah. Oh, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It did a little better. Six million five hundred twenty-two thousand. 613. So they could at least but, buy the mansion that's actually in the movie. Okay. But it, it was a budget of 28 million, so it's basically done. I mean, I, yeah, yeah, pretty I, much. I was waiting for Matthew to get bit by a zombie and regenerate. It almost did a million. It almost, <laughs> did, a million, it almost <laughs> did a million overseas. That's it. I mean, yeah, you, have, you have, have a trailer. We don't, want any, we don't even be uh, typecasted. So well, you have, to, uh, you have a trailer with hot, hot girls with swords. You shouldn't have been able to go wrong with that. But it must have been really badly written. Hey, Scott. I don't want him to get regenerated into the zombie doctor. It's, it, steampunk. <laughs> it, it's, steampunk. It's called Everybody Wants to See Star Wars the Sixth Time. That's what it's called. Uh, okay. And there's a the same person called Joe who went to watch it a certain time as well. Oh, yeah, I'll give you my tally right before mm. it ends on Star Wars. But, uh,. Now, Steam Punk wants to talk about the Flash. Oh yeah, yeah. I li I really like uh, spoilers. 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 Yeah, spoilers. Yeah, sp it'll be spoilers, spoilers. Sweet. Yeah, I've seen I've seen all the way up to uh, episode twelve, season two. So it'll be spoilers if you hadn't seen it. But yeah, I like I like the uh, Zoom storyline, and I like the parallel universe storyline, which is really cool because hmm. it really ties in with like the crisis. Or I'm thinking that's what they're going is like maybe towards Crisis on Infinite Earths, <clears throat> and because uh, there's chaos generated with all the different uh, singularities and vortexes, uh, wormholes between different universes. Um, that's what I really like about Flash, and uh, the the only minor criticism I have about Flash season one and season two is the time travel doesn't really make sense, but that's just a side note. I still think it's really good storytelling, and you know, I I miss Star Trek so much, but Flash is bringing, the Flash TV show is bringing in sci-fi topics that were typically handled by Star Trek, and so that's that's another reason why I like it. And, and so it's, the, it's just a the one with tar pit. Was that the last one you saw, or whatever? The yeah, it's the one where um, Doctor Harrison Wells from Earth Two he gets busted. Um, for stealing Flash's speed yeah, force. That was Tar Pit. That was the real Tar Pit. Okay, I didn't know the name. I couldn't remember the name, but yeah, he gets busted. Well, but he, the name he, had, he had a crisis of conscience because he actually yeah. busted himself. And then they were like, you know, well, we need, we need to kick your ass. And, you know, but then Barry Allen realized, hey, he's got his daughter, and, you know, he can't really hold it against him because he was put in a hard spot. And so though, it's building up to an interesting storyline. I just wonder where they're going to take it. And well, Zoom is two next uh, tomorrow, so that should be real interesting. And Supergirl's on hiatus. Well, Super, yeah, yeah, Supergirl. Uh, they're going to do a Flash crossover in Supergirl episode nineteen. From I read an article about that. It's episode nineteen, which is probably a few months from now, is when they're going to do the crossover with Flash. But that's good that they're doing it. This season, but because I guess because of budget restraints, the crossover is only going to be one-sided. It's going to be Flash doing a guest appearance on Supergirl, and uh, Supergirl is in a different Earth, a different universe, and Flash comes to her universe for some reason. Ooh. Ooh. So, so it should be interesting. Flash is over well, in her universe. Whoa. Hey. Well, well, you, yeah, there you go. <laughs> well, no, I mean it makes it makes sense because yeah. because if, if if Supergirl and Superman were in the Flash universe. Then Cisco and all the other people, like Harrison Wells, would be talking about, well, there's Superman and there's Supergirl. Yeah. So the the that that's a different universe, but in the same multiverse. If that makes any sense. And so I really love that these are topics and these are sci-fi uh, topics that are 
normally uh, tackled by Star Trek, now it's a superhero uh, TV series, and they're really building up the universe now, because now you got Legends of Tomorrow, Flash, Green Arrow, and oh. and Supergirl all in the same multiverse. Right. But I like Legends of Tomorrow, and that's great. I said I'd do three or four, whichever episodes I've have yeah, I like I like Legends of Tomorrow. I don't care what Beyond the Trailer said. The Beyond the Trailer YouTube channel doesn't like Legends of Tomorrow, but I I think it's actually a pretty good show. Oh, I mean, it's, not, it's not the best show that it ever came out, but I mean it's entertaining. I liked it. I've seen, imagine. Go on. I, I was going to say I've seen all I've seen all three episodes on on Footlocker. I was going to say he should um they, I wish they done a crosshole with um The Walking Dead for that. <laughs> <laughs> that would actually be cool. But I am I am kind of bored with Green Arrow. I, or not Green. Well, they don't call it Green Arrow. Arrow. I'm, I just Arrow. I'm not a big fan of, but I am a big fan of Flash, and I am a big fan of Legends of Tomorrow. Arrow. Just towards the end of season one, I got bored and stopped watching. Really? Yeah, it was, I, just, I think I think it was Nerd Sync or something was talking about. Uh, about if you notice how Death uh, Deathlock. I mean not Deathlock. Uh, Deathstroke was pretty much written out of, and the Suicide Squad was pretty much was written out of TV uh, series. Yeah. It's because a lot of times, uh, movie producers or TV produ- uh, movie producers or DC decide, you know, they're going to be in something else. Right. So they do. Well, I they brought them in Arrow, and then all of a sudden they, they saw they're doing too good. Let's pr- let's make a movie out of it. Yeah, but no, they were saying how a lot of times the uh, they'll have something else planned, so. They totally write that person off, and they said, "Don't well, use them here because we're going to use them somewhere in the future." Well, that's the true. success of the Flash TV series, in my opinion, proves that the Flash is powerful enough character, as far as just the, the interest in the character, that you could do a Flash movie, and I think it would do well. You just have to do it. You could probably do a Flash movie where he's interacting. Really do anything. You could probably do a Flash movie where the Flashes are interacting. Mm. All together. Yeah, I mean, you just you, you can do a Flash movie. And I think it would do very well. You just got to stay true to the comic, like the like the TV show has. And you like if they had a Flash movie and they had the TV Flash uh, in it, that would be cool. Yes, I would agree. Like Supergirl. Yeah, I can't remember the actor's name that plays Barry Allen, but I think Grant, he does. Um, Grant Gustin. I, I I like him because he he gives off this persona of. Of being innocent and noble and like like a classic comic book superhero. Right, right, right. And they write it in such a way that you actually care about the characters too. Right. Or so often they you, they write uh, somebody writes something's like okay I couldn't care less if this person walked in the, through the door or if he kicked the bucket. Yeah. So we got a lot of, we got a lot of cool things happening. We have the Flash. Supergirl, which I'm loving. Supergirl, by the way, I didn't see I didn't see Monday's episode, but I'm gonna watch it, it tomorrow. Good. And I'm gonna see for, I gotta see I gotta see Get ready for a surprise. Okay, and X Files, I'm gonna watch two tomorrow because today was my 15 hour. So, uh, I know before we go, Ray had something to say, but we are actually gonna do an emergency. Real walking cast. Oh, Following this, don't say anything, anybody. If you if you know what I'm gonna talk about, but breaking news on it, spoiler. But um, Ray wanted to say something before we go. Yeah. Um. I'm. Uh, my thoughts are out with the family of Daniel Gerson today, as the screenwriter of Big Hero Six and Monsters Inc. died at 49 after battling brain cancer wow. at his home in Los Angeles. 49 years old. My condolences and... Had his whole life ahead of him. For the family. My condolences, my condolences as well. All right, guys. On that note, um, I thought so with Tim and with his family. My condolences. Um, take care. Bye for now.